What's next? Longevity Deal Talk. Welcome back. This episode is made possible by CABI, the Center for Aging and Brain Health Innovation, powered by Baycrest, helping innovators develop, disseminate, scale, and promote adoption of promising innovations in the aging and brain health sector. We have some very informative guests with us. You won't want to miss. Stay with us. I'm Fred Fishkin, along with Mary Furlong. Hi, Mary. Hi, Fred. I can't believe we're nearly a third of the way through 2024 already. It looks like we're just, felt like we were just saying Happy New Year. Time really is flying by, and your mid-year conference, the What's Next Longevity Venture Summit, is fast approaching June 11th and 12th at the Fairmont in San Francisco. The agenda is looking so strong. It's a really top-notch tier of speakers with over 20 investors, and I'm very encouraged by the number of attendees who will be there. We are looking for more, and we're looking for more business plans, too. And with us from the title sponsor, the Age Tech Collaborative from AARP, is VP of Startup Programming and Investments, Amelia Hay. Hi, Amelia. Hi, I'm very excited to be uh, on and uh, I'm talking about this summit in June. Amelia, we're honored to have you in the Age Tech Collaborative from AARP as, for the first time, our title sponsor. You will be taking part in a number of ways, including the Age Tech After Dark Pitch Competition. Tell us more about that and the kinds of innovations you're looking for. So as the Age Tech Collaborative, we're really looking to make aging easier for everyone. So the the kinds of solutions are really, they, they span a lot of things like health tech, fintech, mobility, accessibility, social engagement. Um, and that's what I love about it. It's kind of open to any kind of age tech solution. And we kind of try to make it fun. It's at night. We, we're, we're usually at a restaurant. And so just to kind of make it fun for the audience as well as the startups that are pitching. Uh, and it's going to be fun. When you and I saw that room, we knew we were going to have fun there. <laughs> um, the Age Tech Collaborative really has grown so quickly. Tell our audience how this has evolved. You know, we started the um, collaborative concept in uh, 2021 because we had this bedrock of startups and we decided we needed to surround them with companies that are also interested in age tech that could help these startups further along and get to scale and, and move forward. So it's VCs, it's enterprise companies, it's companies that want to uh, offer pilot opportunities to the startups and business services. And it's amazing. We, you know, we made it very low bar to entry. Um, and it's it's just amazing at how many companies have come in. We now have over 400. And we're all we're just trying to get the ecosystem kind of networking and and growing, but also just kind of talking amongst each other so that we can really strengthen the the future of these startups. Wow, you have an amazing team. Amelia, you'll also be delivering some opening remarks and taking part in other discussions at the summit. What's your assessment of the longevity market at this point in the year? So it is, you know, I mean, clearly longevity and age tech is a big market opportunity. And um, there are a lot of startups, uh, you know, that have been in this space for a while and, and, and brand new ones, and they're looking for support. And I think that's why the Venture Summit is so appealing, because I think we can bring together investors and entrepreneurs together to kind of meet each other, possibly make some deals and, you know, so that the startups can move forward. You know, we always see that networking is one of the big things that people like, but we put some tools in place through the lunches, through the one-on-one -on -one meetings. We have a room for those through the pitches. So there really is a vibrancy. Um, and in what areas are we seeing the biggest opportunities? I know we say health, wealth, and self, but it really is true that you have this huge population and they are trying to define what does health, self, and wealth mean? Yeah, you know, what's really interesting is that I, I would agree with you. Um, uh, that is a mantra that we at AARP have talked about a lot. For, for, for our focus, actually, we are really trying to also bring out the kind of the, the fun in longevity, okay? There, there are some engaging things that, that um, are happening. There are startups out there that can offer this. So there is this support of as you age, you know, and the, the, the startups that you might need for that. But also, I think we're trying to also expand our focus and look at where, where are the things where people kind of can, can get ex 
excited or, or just rejuvenated by by what is out there in terms of tech startups. And as you alluded to, uh, Mary and, and Amelia, a lot of the value in attending this conference, the Longevity Venture Summit, comes from the people, the attendees, the participants, just mingling, making contacts that are so important. Things happen in hallways, right? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's one of the things that I think we we often stress is that we've got to give people time to to talk and network um, because I think that's when things really happen. And so, as Mary alluded to, the the uh, HTech one on ones that we're doing will further that. You know, these fifteen minute conversations where you get to talk to people that you really want to talk to, um, and the lunch and uh, just the general networking that we hope occurs in this buzz while we're there. Uh, speaking of fun, we even have a game night with Ageless Innovation. We've seen many partnerships and deals formed over the 21 years that we've been doing this. One of my favorite years was when the winner got a term sheet the next day at breakfast. So, Amelia, we want to thank you again for being the title sponsor for the key role that you and your team have played at the Age Tech Collaborative at AARP. It really is one of the most significant um, growth areas that I have seen in my history of watching this. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, Amelia. The website for all that you do is at agetechcollaborative.org. Mary, we have two more guests joining us, and they have something in common. They are both Allisons. Dr. <laughs> Allison Sekuler is the president and chief scientist at the Center for Aging and Brain Health Innovation, TABI. Hi, Allison. Hey, great to be here. And we are also happy to have with us Allison Cook, an MFA associate and founder of Better Aging and Policy Consulting. Great to see you, Allison. Great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Well, both Allisons have been doing amazing work, and Fred, we're delighted to have them here with us on Deal Talk. Allison, the work you've been doing at CABI is just so impressive. And you've been with us in this business plan competition as a judge for, I think, seven or eight years. Yeah. So we're honored to have you back in the 10K competition. It will be an exciting event. Uh, tell us more about why you participate in competitions like this and the kinds of companies that you're looking to invest in. Well, Mary, I think that actually the very first competition I judged was yours, uh, even before maybe I judged any of the ones for Cabby. And it just got me hooked because it's so great to see all of the really innovative ideas that are out there and the creativity that people have. And year after year after year, we see more and more really um, like an increasing number of people who are interested in this space and recognize the importance of it. When we're looking for who is going to be best in show, for example, whether it's at your pitch competition or in the sorts of companies that we fund at Cabby, we're looking for people who are thinking a little bit outside the box, who really are meeting the need of someone. I find that sometimes the founders who have a really personal connection to what they're doing are the ones that can come up with not only the best ideas, but can really pitch it the best. So we're looking for um, especially things in um, what we can do to prevent the onset of neurocognitive decline or dementia, what we can do to detect it as early as possible, and how do we take care of people who are living with this disease, including the caregivers, not just the people who are um, themselves diagnosed. So those are the sorts of things that we're really looking for um, at the earlier stages and then also at those later stages. We really want to make sure that we're we're doing everything we can to reduce the numbers of people diagnosed, but we're not forgetting we have to take care of those who are also living with the disease. And as one of the judges, I think we have seven judges this year, you also learn a lot from each other and sometimes yeah. you co-invest. Is that correct? That's absolutely true. And and I love the the deliberation process at the very end because we each have our own, you know, ratings that we do during the competition. Uh, so we do those independently, but at the end we compare notes. And um that's where, you know, your own biases and your own sorts of ideas can be challenged. And I really find that very helpful for, for, for me personally to make sure that I'm getting as broad a view of the field as possible. And, and there's so many talented judges on your panels that I always learn something about what is new coming up there. I mean, I know quite a lot from the work we do in CABI, but there's always more that we can learn. And I feel like we learn as much from each other as the judges, as we do from um, the learning from the contestants. I, I think we're up to over 25 angel seed corporate 
investors this year. So more investors than we've ever yes. had before throughout the whole conference. In fact, we had to add a session yesterday to have one minute pitches from angel investors. So tell yeah. the companies to please apply. There's, there's so much innovation taking place in the area of brain health today. Are there some developments you find most promising or exciting? Because you also have the Rotman Research yeah. Institute right there with you. Yeah. At the Rotman Research Institute, we are doing quite a lot of work focusing in this area that we're calling precision aging, which is how do we make sure that each person is able to age as optimally as possible for themselves? And that's throughout the entire um, life course, whether they're working to prevent the onset of dementia, whether they might be you know, at having the potential for dementia. And so we want to detect it as early as possible. How do we have the right diagnostics for people? How do we treat people the right way? And how do we care for folks? And, and really what we're trying to do is to use precision medicine um, to do for aging and brain health, what it has done for cancer. That's, that's the dream. And so what we're, what we're really excited about are some of these new scientific advances that lead to innovations in prevention, in early detection, um, as well, obviously, as in sort of the more standard treatment and diagnostic space, but then also in the care space. And I think that when we look at the collision of technologies, when we put together our, the different kinds of artificial intelligence with robotics, with uh, VR, AR, XR, um, with sensors, with Internet of Things, that collision of technologies is where we really see all the power. And so we're looking you know, to, to do what we can both in creating and investing in innovations that are bringing together different kinds of innovations and platforms. That's, I think, where we're going to see the most benefit. Wow. So, so promising. Allison, you and your team have a wonderful podcast, Defy Dementia, that's been nominated for a Webby Award. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Tell our audience a little bit more about it. So Defy Dementia is really focused on that early stage, what we can do to decrease the, the, um, the, the risk of dementia in the first place. So people often think, well, my grandma or my grandpa had dementia, so I'm going to get it too. But in fact, at least 40% of the risk factors for dementia are things that you can control by changing your lifestyle. So, you know, simple things like diet and exercise and sleep, um, but then other things you might not think about like hearing loss, uh, vision loss, um, air pollution, uh, being a caregiver, those are all also things that can increase your risk for dementia. So in the podcast, we always have an interview with someone with lived experience. And then we have a scientist who responds to that person and gives us the lowdown on what's happening in the brain with respect to that risk factor. And then also gives a lot of really basic, simple um, tips on how people can change their lives to decrease their dementia risk. And it's it's been a real pleasure. And I have to say, Mary, we were inspired by you because when uh, I was in California years and years ago, and we had you as a guest on another one of our podcasts, and we did it at Berkeley in a really fancy studio, we said, it's time to really up our game. And then listening to you and Fred, we're like, okay, we got to take this to the next level. So I want us to thank both of you guys for the inspiration of, of, I, I, of I bringing us along. I do remember that podcast. It was really fun. And it's really fun to have you here today. Uh, years back, Allison, we were nominated by for a Webby, uh, both for third age and for senior net. So you have permission to buy a new dress if there's an award ceremony. <laughs> it's pretty fun to walk that red carpet. So yeah. that's wonderful and good luck. Um, Thanks. There's something else we want to remind our audience about and our amazing newsletter editor, Allison Cook, you've written an article for us about the State Digital Equity Capacity Grant Program, which every startup should pay attention to. Yes. This is a new federal grant program that's making $1.44 billion available to all 56 states and territories, as well as, as well as to native entities, all to address digital equity. States have developed their digital equity plans with a previous round of funding. So this is really to implement those plans as well as to update them. They The funding can be used uh, for five different areas. First, availability and affordability of broadband. Second, accessibility and inclusivity of public resources and services. Third, digital literacy. Fourth, awareness of online privacy and cybersecurity. And finally, availability and affordability of consumer devices and technical support for those devices. So things that really do apply to many startups in this field. 
The really exciting piece is that the funding focuses on addressing digital equity for a variety of underserved populations, one of which is people over the age of 60. You know, it was great uh, having Lawrence on with us from Get Set Up not long ago to outline all that they're doing to help get plans submitted. So what should our audience know about these looming deadlines? Yes. So states can apply for this funding by May 28th of this year, and they're able to subgrant a portion of it. The money is expected to go out to states by this summer, and the states have about five years to spend it. There, there will be later deadlines for territories and for Native entities. As Lauren shared, since the deadline is rapidly approaching, it's important to talk to state partners now about applying for the funding and how they're going to use it. He highlighted that Get Set Up is working with a variety of state entities, uh, state departments for the aging, area agencies on aging, Medicaid departments, libraries, and more. Wow. And on top of the $1.44 billion in the program, there will be another related grant program and a one and a quarter billion dollars later this year. So it's really important. I know a lot of the people that listen to the podcast, especially entrepreneurs and investors, will want to help shape some of those plans as since they're serving those needed populations. Yes, yes. Even more funding coming down the pipeline. Um the first bucket was for those digital equity plans. The second bucket that we discussed today was to implement the plans. And then the third bucket is called Digital Equity Competitive Grant, uh, the Digital Equity Competitive Grant Program. So another 1.25 billion, and it will be to, to develop and implement additional digital equity projects. So we'll be keeping an eye out as more details about the program are released. And our newsletter went out today. So if people watch the, read the newsletter, they can also get a copy of the story and please pass that on. So thank you to both of the Allisons for being with us today and such valuable information and leadership. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Great to have the Allies as allies. We also want to thank Amelia Hay for being with us from the Age Tech Collaborative from AARP. Our gratitude to CABI, the Center for Aging and Brain Health Innovation, powered by Baycrest, for helping to make this edition possible, helping innovators develop, disseminate, scale, and promote adoption of promising innovations in the aging and brain health sector. And thank all of you for watching or listening. We hope you'll make it to the Longevity Venture Summit, June 11th and 12th at the Fairmont in San Francisco. Find more info and register at boomerventuresummit.com. Use the code FOM20 for a discount. And you can always find us and the What's Next Living Longer Better Smarter podcast at maryfurlong.com slash podcasts.